All right. Well, let's move on to some happier. <laughs> While I'm eating, by the way. Yeah. Enjoy that. I'm almost hey, done. Don't worry. Go through it. It's I'm all right. Almost, almost um, we're talking about pride, trying to sprinkle some pride stuff in every day this week um, as we lead up to what would have been St. Pete Pride this I weekend. Know. And I'll tell you, it has been really sad because I feel like. And when I say sad, I mean, obviously, this is in quotations because I'm talking about a party, a fun. You know, it's also sort of like a little family reunion because usually I have a lot of friends that'll come down. My mom has come down a couple of times for Pride to visit. And just to, like, not have it, and this is the first time in a very long time that June doesn't equal a Pride parade or some sort of Pride activity It just feels weird. And I just literally feel like I'm floating in like hot weather. Like, I don't even know what month it is, like what's going on. Because you're floating in hot weather. I am. Like, I'm just like a weather balloon, just like got untethered. I'm just floating around. (laughs) There's nothing to look forward to. Yeah, I'm just like, what's going on with the summer? Uh, But we're trying to bring that pride feeling to you. So we got some really cool stuff I have planned for Friday's podcast. Um, But today, I wanted to get someone on the phone that has a really cool story that uh, some of the news outlets here in Tampa Bay have picked up. Um, And, of course, the phone number would have 69 in it. Nice. Wow. Let's see. Hello? Is this Art Smith? This is Art Smith. Art Smith. It's Miguel, Holly, and Scotty the Body. How the heck are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Wonderful. Now, you are a man about town. If you are what um, in in our little gay circle here in Tampa Bay, you got your St. Pete gays, you have your Tampa Bay, you have your Tampa gays. gays. Uh, Art, I would consider, is one of those Tampa gays. You always see him out with a camera or doing something really cool in the community. And Art, first, before we get to this cool project that's been picked up by several uh, news stations here in Tampa Bay... Um, What is it that you do when we see you around town all the time at at the club? Well, it all all kind of started with um, Channel 125, which a friend of mine had started about 20 years ago, um, archiving original gay video online uh, because there were no gay channels and stuff back then. And so Channel 125 gets involved with a lot of events. We've been a sponsor of the New Tampa Pride since year one. And um, actually, that's how I met you and Holly. That's right. I remember that. It I was, do, too. That was like literally the that was the week before we started on the air. It was like the week after we moved here and all my clothes hadn't even come from Panama City yet. <laughs> and I distinctly remember I had to wear this dress with no bra. And I was like, oh, God, <laughs> boobs are out. But I remember meeting you. So that's all in the same day. I'm just a little bit confused, though. Miguel is the one with the lighter hair or the darker hair? <laughs> I remember you, t- you yep. said that joke when you <laughs> yep. filmed this. I love it. Five years later, I still remember it. That's so awesome. Now, you film things that are happening in the community for this channel you have online. Mm-hmm. Now, what is right. it that you're doing for the gay community that's now gotten picked up by several outlets? Well, it started about six months ago. Um, I've always been involved with the gay community somehow. I've published gay magazines in Atlanta. I've written for Watermark here when I first moved to Tampa. And our gay history has always been kind of important to me. So about six months ago, I was speaking with some friends in Atlanta, and um, one of them happened to be the owner of what was Atlanta's biggest, gayest, most iconic nightclub, Backstreet. Oh, I like I didn't get to do Backstreet because it was gone by the time that I was old enough. Oh, but my mom has stories about oh. going there. Like this club was iconic in Atlanta back in the day. Okay. So for people who don't know, Backstreet opened in 1975 in Atlanta, and it was this mega three-story club with a monstrous dance floor. That uh, in the later years, uh, starting in the 80s. It had a a 24-hour-a-day liquor license, which meant (laughs) that they could serve alcohol any time of the day or night. But the drawback was they could never close. Yeah. If they closed closed for one hour, then they lost their 24-hour license and went back to a normal bar. So 
So it was people would go there. We would line up at two, three o'clock in the morning after all the other clubs closed and party until daylight. And then you'd walk out from this dark dance club and be blinded by the sunlight. So I can't. Anyway, <laughs> uh, we did a t-shirt. For, I did a t-shirt design for them using their old logo, and we used it to raise money for the Atlanta Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. And um, it was to commemorate 45 years since their opening. Mm. That went over really well. And I toyed around with a couple of other favorite bars. You know how we all have those places we remember from our early days, you know, in the in the bar scene. Yes. Mm-hmm. I wish I had gotten that T-shirt when I was there. I, you know, I wish I had something to remember that bar by. So I started doing a couple more that I had contacts with and I could track down the logos. And by March, I was up to maybe five or six bars. Wow. And then coronavirus hit. Yeah. Yeah. And suddenly I was on lockdown. Um, I, you know, my social media accounts, um, the businesses that I worked with promoting their, you know, events and and sales and stuff, they had nothing to, nothing for me to do. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm going to revisit this bar project. So since March 15, I have added more than 400 bars to that collection. Whoa. That is incredible. That is so awesome. Now, I'm assuming these aren't just ones that are from the gay past of Tampa Bay history. Is this all over the U.S.? It is. Um, I've had, because of the lockdown, of course, I've had to work largely with online archives of uh, magazines and uh, newspapers and whatever I can track down online. Mm -hmm. But there are bars. I mean, the major areas, I've got um, probably 50 or more bars in Georgia, um, more than 50 bars in Florida, more than 50 bars in the state of New York, um, probably 30 or 40 in Pennsylvania. But there's, you know, Delaware, there's a couple from Canada, there's New Jersey, um, Illinois, Wisconsin, wherever I can find history about a gay bar that isn't there anymore. um, I'll, you know, through the wonder of social media, I'll track it down. That is so awesome. And I'm sure people are so fond and grateful of that. I mean, I remember after Pulse, that was a big topic of conversation in the gay community because over the past 15 years, we've seen the decline of the gay bar Mm -hmm. because as people like Scott, who's 23, and you have gay friends, and I have gay friends that are around your age, Scott, and they're like, eh, I don't need to go to the gay bar because going to McDinton's or uh, any of the uh, bars in Soho Mm -hmm. or downtown Tampa, they welcome everybody. It feels inclusive. Right, exactly. And you don't feel shunned. Right. Where that's what really the gay bars were a beacon for. It was like, hey, you're welcome here, even though you aren't welcome anywhere else. I mean, if you ask, I mean, and I, I don't know for like a young gay, but I mean, I feel like anyone over 25 or 30 you say, what was what was your experience walking into your first gay club? And I can tell you the song, the smell, the feel, because it was sort of like, I have arrived. You're home. It is. It felt like home. And so that's so cool uh, that you're bringing that to so many people. Yeah, and what's really cool is I get, you know, because I do it on Facebook through my own profile, when I post in some of these different groups, you know, I partied in Pittsburgh or whatever, um, these people know who know it's me, mm. so they they give me feedback. They'll comment on my post and say, you know, thank you for doing this. This this is where I met my husband thirty years ago, mm. or this was a, a very important place in my coming out. Or and I'm getting a lot of feedback from a lot of people that are all over the country who are really pleased to to see you know the. Uh, their bar is kind of brought back to life. Mm, I love that. That is fantastic. You know, I've always thought about doing a podcast um, talking to elder gays because there is this whole life that I feel like we don't remember and we don't preserve. And I don't want that to be lost. Right. Because it's such a rich history. 
So I'm so Absolutely. glad that you are doing this. How can people peruse uh, all the different options that you have? So on my website, uh, which is thewowbiz.com, um, on thewowbiz.com, right at the top of the homepage is a link for the, um, the gay throwback T-shirts. If they click on that link, they will go to another page on my website that breaks down the list by state. So it'll say Florida, mm. and it'll have, um, you know, Miami, Tampa, Orlando, whatever, and it will list the names of the bars from that area that are in the collection. Mm. If they so want awesome. to see that particular collection, there's also a link there where they can mm. go directly to see the T-shirts. Um, and it's all on one page on my website, so it makes it really easy to find what you're looking for right now um, you know, cause with 400 options and, and growing every day, um, mm. it would take forever to scroll through right. <laughs> the individual. Absolutely. Did you get a logo from club one in Savannah? Club one in Savannah is still operating. Oh, that, Oh, Oh, I didn't know that. I haven't been in so long to the club one. Uh, wow. Um, I have, I have done a couple of bars that are still in business. Um, by request of the owner. Mm, so, gotcha. Because they're still selling their own merch. So that totally makes they sense. Sell, well, they sell their own at their store. Right. You know, at their bar. But, for instance, I was doing research on a bar in Miami that was um, possibly the largest gay bar in recent history. Mm. Um, it's called Mecca. And it was in downtown Miami. And um, it was 30,000 square feet. Goodness gracious. So it's twice the size of a Kroger grocery store or a Winn-Dixie. Oh, my gosh. Um, Lord. And while, while I was talking to the owner, he said, well, why don't you include my other bar, too? And I said, what bar is that? And he said, Marcello's in Buffalo. Oh, yes. I've been there. My boyfriend's taken me there in Buffalo before. Yeah. Uh, I saw the pictures. I remember when you took your trip up there. So Joe Marcello asked me to put his current bar in the collection also uh, because he said he's not interested in selling online, but he does sell merchandise at the, at the location. Wow. So I would do one for club one. I'll gladly do it. I've been there many years ago, probably before you were born. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I'm sure you have some stories. Well, thank you so much for uh, explaining this new project that you have going on. And now people can go and peruse some of these logos from back in the day. We really appreciate it. I hope they can also take the time to read some of the listings because I've tried to include history when I can in any of them. So the younger people who never experienced it mm -hmm. can also see and learn a little bit about where we came from. Absolutely. That is so cool. Well, Art, thank you so much for all that you do. And when uh, I make it over to the Tampa side, I'll say hi, okay? All right. Thanks. Y'all have a great day. You, you too. too. Happy Pride.